guys, guys, I, I gotta say it. I love Drew Barrymore. I really do. I don't think there's a Drew Barrymore film that I have not seen. But today, we have to react to Dylan Mulvaney on the Drew Barrymore show. <laughs> Let's talk about it. All right, all right, let's stop the dramatics. I'm not actually crying over this story, but it is uh, just a recent development that did kind of, oh, it, it hit me, this one. <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney, live on the Drew Barrymore Show. We're here to talk about it. You know, I'm honestly over all the gender politics and talking about gender, but... You know, these stories pop up and they can't be ignored sometimes. I've seen this all over the internet now, all over Instagram, all over Twitter. But before we get into it and before we watch, guys, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and sign up for my newsletter, which is in the description down below. We are going to be picking 10 of you to send a little unapologetic PragerU mug, plus some stickers if you if you want a sticker, and a little personal note for me so you can... Uh, Join the little pool of people that we pull from by signing up for the email list, which again is in the link in the description down below. We got Taylor here in Nashville. Hey, hey, happy Wednesday. Ready for some girl talk? Yes, we are. We're like so ready for it. And we've got Scott. <laughs> What's up, everyone? <laughs> Scott, are you ready for girl talk? Oh, uh, I cannot wait. Yeah. <laughs> We're all revved up and ready for it. Uh, without further ado, let's get into this video that's now been viewed 3.1 million times on Twitter. Dylan Mulvaney on the Drew Barrymore Show. Let me ask you about the negativity. How have you dealt with it and, and with it? And, and what's an approach you take? What's your self-talk? What do you filter? Yes. How do you... I still read the comments, but there is so much hatred directed at the trans community right now. It's everywhere. And I think the greatest weapon that I can contribute is trans joy and comedy and talking about hard you know, subjects and really intricate moments of a transition and try to let everybody in to see that, you know, I'm not a monster. I'm not somebody that, you know, um, is trying to, to do anything but be myself and be happy. And the applause ring in. Uh, there's one thing I want to talk about there, and it's the, the phrase that there's so much trans hatred on the internet. And it's important that we define what hatred means in this sense, because I made a video about Dylan way back in the day, back when Dylan had, I don't know, like 2 million subscribers or followers on TikTok, and now is way up there, probably past 10 million. And I made a video just criticizing some of the things that Dylan said in his videos and criticizing directly his support of children being able to transition and supporting trans youth. Now, that criticism is going to be labeled as trans hate. I'm, I'm now labeled a transphobe, a turf, whatever you want to call me. Now I have that label. And Dylan took to the internet to make a video about my podcast, which I should have pulled up, but crying and saying, this conservative girl made a podcast about me and she's so full of hatred and criticizing me and all of this. Criticism is not hatred. I want to make it very clear. I do not hate Dylan. I do not harbor any deep vitriol for Dylan whatsoever. And in some ways, maybe Dylan is accessing some part of himself and that's what he's doing on the internet. Uh, we, can, we can debate back and forth about that, although, because I don't know that Dylan, in my view, is a true case of gender dysphoria. But if you're willing to undergo the surgeries and all this stuff, maybe, maybe, maybe he actually is. I, I don't know. But... Hatred is not the driving force here, and it's certainly not the driving force in, I think, most people's criticism of the trans community and specifically trans activists like Dylan who are pushing this on youth. We're not motivated by hatred. In fact, it's quite the opposite, but whatever. Love ya. We love ya. Thank you, everybody, for that support. How do you stay on your own path where do you draw boundaries? Where do you find the strength to keep being the joy? Well, I think having my chosen family and the people that I love mm -hmm. to take care of me, but I also think there's something just about uh, making sure that you're, you don't put something out there before you're ready and, and really just surrounding yourself with good people. 
It's interesting because I look at someone like you and I can't imagine anybody disliking you. Oh, please. I'm so do sorry. You know, do you want to know, ironically, who uh, dislikes me the most sometimes? Who? Myself. Okay, pause. Now, a lot of people freaked out over this moment. This was screenshot and posted all over the internet because it's a Drew Barrymore, a real woman, kneels down to a trans woman, and I don't really care about the kneeling. In fact, I think Drew Barrymore does this quite a lot on her show where she gets down and talks to her guests about how much great work they've done and blah, blah, blah. I'm not here to talk about uh, the kneeling in particular. There's just so much of this that seems very performative and superficial. And part of that is the element of being live on TV and being on a talk show where you kind of have to be all <laughs> smiley. But I don't know, guys. It, something about this is not landing for me and it does not feel real. It does not feel genuine. And when you're motivated by followers and money and fame and all of these things, which... I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's probably one of the motivations here considering how famous Dylan Mulvaney has managed to become in such a short period of time. This does not feel genuine. Am I Am I the only one who, who feels like this does not feel real? No, it's definitely cringe. And you know, even if this is something that she does regularly on the show, it's still pretty cringe. And you can't help but think back to what we saw with BLM and COVID and you saw like masses of white people on their knees confessing their sins of being white and kissing the feet of black people. And it, it definitely invokes some of that same cringeworthy uh, imagery. And yeah. it's definitely a a form of performativeness, not even specific. I mean, it's just such a, it's such a like visual metaphor for what society is doing to the if you if you claim the victimhood status uh, of transgenderism right now, then society is ready to kneel before you and let you take women's accolades and uh, go into women's spaces wherever it may be. So it's it's very on the nose whether or not Drew intended it to be that way. It's definitely sure. coming across. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like I said, I love Drew Barrymore. Uh, there's not a Drew Barrymore film that I have not seen. And I do love her personality. And I think she truly is a compassionate, kind a happy person who's trying to find her her way in the world from what I've seen from her on a personal level and her uh, and her shows and interviews and things like that. I truly do feel as though she is a, a good person and it might be the same for Dylan. <laughs> I might want to extend that same that same uh, judgment towards Dylan, although it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher as the days go by. And we're going to watch some other videos of Dylan doing a I think charity performance with the Trevor Project. And if you're familiar with the Trevor Project, they're an LGBTQ plus organization that happens to help in funding resources for trans youth. And by resources, you all know what that means. That means medically transitioning. That means we're doing something incorrect. Uh, and in fact, harming children in the process. So it's getting harder and harder for me <laughs> to be compassionate in that sense, but I'm gonna keep it up. Drew was definitely giving me a little bit of like kindergarten teacher vibes yeah. in the way that she was speaking to mm -hmm. uh, Dylan. And it's kind of like at a certain point, you got to realize like, hey, isn't this a little patronizing uh, yep. coming from Drew? And it's it's as you guys were saying, it's all somewhat performative and to make you feel better as though you're, you know, you need all this help. It's like, hey, can't you can't you figure it out yourself? Um, yes. In a sense, it's just this patronization is just going a little too far. And I think that's why it feels so strange. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The way that she talks, it's almost as though talking down to somebody like, are you going to understand yeah. what I'm saying right now? I know you get a lot of hate. How do you deal with the hate that you're getting? Even though Dylan's probably probably inching up on being a millionaire, if not already, with uh, the amount of money and fame and all the stuff that's been garnered from doing these performances. And Dylan might come off as being, oh, I'm like so sweet and I'm going into a women's bathroom, which just widowed me. I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. I'm not buying it. I can, I, I see through that shit. I'm not buying it. This is not where we're at right now. But let's keep watching. Oh, Taylor, you're going to say something? Yeah, well, just the fact that he, remember, identifies as a girl, specifically not a woman. And yep. he's being spoken to as a little girl. But we have to ask ourselves, honestly, like looking at this situation, looking at this human being in front of us, is this a grown man who's a millionaire uh, and is making tons of money and getting tons of influence and acclaim for performing into the role that he's performing? Mm -hmm. Or is this a little girl? 
And it's amazing to see how much of society and celebrity class, the president of the United States are willing to sit there and be like, yep, this is a little girl. Yeah. And I saw an article the other day uh, that Dylan says, oh, I, I started coming out as trans when I was four years old. And that's what the article said. And apparently that's Dylan's claim, even though they're Many videos on the internet of Dylan as a man saying that he's a gay man performing in Broadway on, on shows like the Book of Mormon. Great show, by the way, but that's besides the point. <laughs> and the narrative seems to be shifting and changing a little bit because we're trying to get our footing as we become more and more famous and more and more people want to know our story. So we'll see. We'll see about that. Oh, me too. Oh. And this doesn't but, feel real. I guess, you know, you've asked me now, like... Ugh. You've asked me, like, what I would do to combat the hate, right? Yeah. But what do you do? Okay, that's a great question. Now, I started... You've been doing it a little longer than I have. Well, you know, it's funny, because when I was a kid, um, you, starting with E.T., it was the first time I was introduced to film reviews, which are basically social media. Yes. But... I felt like all these reviews, and it would, could be a Charlie's Angels, it could be an E.T., it could be The Wedding Singer, <sighs> everything in between. If you read reviews, just like on social media, you are Look pretty much scared. Look. Look at that. That's not relating. It's not, oh, I, I don't even know what to say. I know what I want to say, and that is, this is fake as fuck. <laughs> That's what I really want to say. I'm like in my brain while I'm watching this, trying to find a way to say that in a more tactful sense, but I cannot find a more tactful way to say it than that. It's so <laughs> fake. Oh my gosh. Guaranteed a 50-50, some like it, some don't. So you've got to be willing to bear down and brace for it. And I think- I think picking your battles too. Yes. And sometimes I think the greatest uh, response can just be in the next joyous video or in the next win that you have, because that just goes to show that like you are continuing on and whatever that those people are projecting onto you, it isn't actually penetrating. I couldn't agree more because another thing that you're making me realize is to not carry on in spite of others. I'm sorry, I just realized that I'm sitting on the floor with Drew. I'm <laughs> so <laughs> happy to be doing this. Thank you for oh, joining mm. me on the floor. The floor always feels safer. It feels nice. <sighs> I have no words. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words. I What I will say is, guys, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning because Dylan Mulvaney as we all know at least in his past life wanted to you know be on Broadway and be a star and was auditioning for all these shows and acting and was in the Book of Mormon that's all that all doesn't stop now that the transition happens in fact it's catapulted this is going to be a meteoric rise of, of Dylan Mulvaney I'm thinking next is probably going to be feature film or some very popular television show or Maybe even a star on Broadway. There might even be an entire Broadway show uh, where Dylan Mulvaney takes the the lead role in that. There's no way this ends here. We're on a roller coaster that only goes up, my friends. <laughs> There's more women's spaces to occupy and more accolades of women to achieve than uh, yep. biological men can do. So yeah, there are more uh, glass ceilings to be broken by biological males. And by George, if Dylan doesn't do it. Some other biological man is going to do it. You sure that roller coaster is going up? <laughs> <laughs> it's going somewhere. And I'm on it because I feel it. I, I feel it. Now, this next video is uh, Dylan in what I mentioned earlier, this benefit concert, I believe, for the Trevor Project. And if you'll remember, in Dylan's early meteoric rise, there was a video that he put out about having tampons and... Uh, Tampax had responded to this and that company had responded to a number of other trans influencers and Dylan said, you know, I carry a tampon in case a woman in the restroom that I go into needs one. And of course, this was met with backlash and an uproar from feminists and women alike who said, no, thank, thank you, but no, thank you. And uh, we don't need that included in our space and maybe you shouldn't be in our bathroom. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, now, Dylan for the Trevor Project sang this song about needing a tampon. I need a tampon. Yeah, I do. That's what she said. Tampon. And when she said it, he put a lamp on inside my head. Helpful. I need so helpful to have a tampon when I'm in need. Let's never cease. Oh, 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 oh,
like that. Mm. I don't need it back. <laughs> All right, now we're really cooking. But I feel like I'm missing something. Hey. Oh, hi, 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 hi. It's my trans sibs. Everyone, everyone, I want you to meet the lovely humans that I have on stage with me tonight. We have Mars Rucker, they, them, the H-Town Bread genderqueer dog. Love that. You say they, them, and I am in. The crowd goes wild. I just want to say, this is just showing Dylan's performing background. So don't be fooled by the videos that you see on the internet that you think are, oh, it's just Dylan coming to me from his bedroom and talking to me, and this is how he truly feels. He is a performer. He always has been a performer. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say that all of this is a performance, but if there's anybody capable of making all of this a performance, it would be Dylan Mulvaney. And the wool could be pulled over anybody's eyes, clearly, because we went from TikTok videos uh, to the Drew Barrymore show. So, just The math to... is mathing, as they the say. The math is mathing for me, boy. I'm no detective or inspector gadget, <laughs> but the math is mathing <laughs> on this. Oh, goodness. And now... Dylan introduces more friends, and they're all people of color, of course, and non-binary, they, them, he, him, she, her, trans, femmes, whatever. Let's watch more. Zamora la perdida, she, they, ella, ella, gender-free, trans, femme. Zachary A. Myers is she, they, trans, femme. Renda Rivera, they, them, non-binary. You know, I was so obsessed with gaining the support of cis women that what I really needed was my trans sibs around. Now, for those of you watching at home, is there anything that you would say to somebody starting on their gender journey right now? Being trans is special. You are enough as is, and there's nothing you have to do to be trans. And mm. The truth will set you free. At the beginning of your transition, the truth can seem like the scary monster hiding under your bed. But once you face it, it's just the best version of yourself. That is so wild to me. So the first person said being trans is special, which to me kind of sounds like a Freudian slip. That's not something that you should really be admitting to because it shouldn't be special, right? It should just be something normal and everybody's normal who's trans. And then you transition and then everything's fine and you're living in your truth. But now people are transitioning because it makes them feel special. Because it gives them a, now in Dylan's case, celebrity status, but certainly social status within our society to say, I'm trans and I'm part of a marginalized group. And does, does anything in this video scream marginalized to you? Because I'm looking at five people on a stage who are all being cheered and applauded by, for simply saying their pronouns. Has this ever happened in the history of humankind <laughs> that you get cheered and applauded for saying the pronouns or the name that you want to be referenced by? So being trans is special and live in your truth. And the truth might seem scary. Yeah, it's scary because your truth and what you're trying to insinuate is other people's truth is bodily mutilation and irreversible damage due to med medications and a, a path of medical transition that you really don't get to come back from, at least not of late. So, yeah, the truth is scary, if we want to call it that. Oh. And the fact that they're using the language of the, the truth will set you free, which is actually Jesus words, by the way, mm. uh, is pretty crazy and backwards, considering that they're not pointing to objective truths like biology about the truth that the fact that men cannot become women or women cannot become men. Those are truths that can yeah. help set you free. The, the this whole thing is a marketing campaign for lies. It's a very happy, smiley marketing campaign for you will be happier if you embrace this ideology about gender identity and believing that your personal feelings supersede biology and that you shouldn't acknowledge the reality of your sex or your gender, but that you should try to change that, uh, which is something that's impossible to do. And that's and it's a lie that, that that's not going to lead you to a lifetime of challenges and misery and, uh, per, you know, just perpetual little problems. So it, they're not, they're literally saying the truth will set you free as they're leading you into a web of lies that is going to by and large, uh, make your life worse and miserable. Right. This this stuff is going to fail you. This way of thinking is going to fail you. Statistically, it is going yeah. to fail you. And it's so interesting because when you hear from, 
I would say normal trans activists, or at least the ones that I've spoken to, they go, my gender dysphoria was so hard and so difficult. And I woke up every morning suffering and torturing myself. And I decided that instead of torturing myself on my own, I would go and see a doctor, try and do whatever it was to handle this problem. And then after uh, some time, the doctor recommended maybe gender transition is the way for you. And I mold over that decision, at least reasonable trans people mold over that decision and said, okay, you know what? I will go through this painful experience and see if this helps me feel safer in my body, which I believe, uh, what's his name? Scott Nugent, the guy who was in uh, Matt Walsh's What a, What is a Woman documentary. Look into his story and hear what he has to say about his transition, or I guess her transition because biological female to male. And this is the the issue because you mull over this and you go this is a really harmful thing that I'm going to put my body th through in order to live in my truth but now these people are saying oh no it's special do it it's special not avoid at all costs and only do if it is a last resort for you no do it now because you feel uncomfortable now and this will make you special now it's totally flipped backwards it's just insanity don't feel like your transition has to be any which way. Everyone's gender journey is their own. Trust mm. yourself, regardless of other people's opinions. These were all the things that I needed to hear early on, and I am now able to call many trans humans my friends and mentors, some of which are in the audience with us right now, like sis! <laughs> Hi, doll. You look stunning. Well, you do, too. Now, we first met when I saw you as Ado Annie in Oklahoma, and you nailed it. And to be honest, I've always wanted to perform with you. Oh, girl. You know. <laughs> uh, you know you don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Right here. And oh, right now. Okay, that's enough. I get They're it. Like, where's this the is... skip button in the yeah. chat? <laughs> I get that this is, you know, performance and everything, but it's just giving Uncanny Valley as I continue to watch it. It's just such a character. It really is a character. There is no other way to uh, go about this sort of transition, or at least in the way that Dylan's doing it, without playing a character. Because there's an abundance of videos of Dylan on the internet acting, talking, speaking totally different. And now that he identifies as not a woman, but a girl, and thank you, Taylor, for pointing that out, not a woman, but a girl, Dylan's taking on a, a total new character, new voice, new demeanor, new body language. So it's very much a performance in any way you slice it. This is a performance. And it's a performance that tells only one side of the story. You know, he's harping on and on about having his trans sibs but are there any detrans sibs represented in this conversation nope. you're only telling half the story and the experiences of only the that you want to portray so that it continue that it can paint this you know butterflies and rainbows picture of what this lifestyle is like and it's just not the case and that's that's a, I, i'm saying that grounded in statistical reality and in there's plenty of stories out there there's plenty of evidence mounting evidence by the way like we just saw the the country of norway banned uh the the gender affirming care for minors uh yep. and relegated it just to research and not clinical uh not clinical practice. And that's because they're seeing that, hey, there's actually, we're, we're running ahead with this gender affirming treatment, but the evidence is mounting that we don't know how effective it is and that uh, it, it often can lead to more harm than good. So uh, this this portrayal, this character, and that's why people are like, oh, he's he, what? how could he be harming anybody? He's just going out there being happy. But that's the thing. You're, you're putting lipstick on a pig and the pig is harming a lot of people. And uh, creating opportunities for, you know, like we've seen on not just in sports, but in prisons and, and, uh, in women's spaces all over the place for, for all this stuff to happen. Yeah. It's Dylan's a, it's much like all woke things, a pretty packaging for what is a really horrible message message. And, uh, the words sound pretty equity, inclu in inclusivity, diversity, you know, uh, all of these things, acceptance that doesn't it all sound wonderful. Yeah, of course. <laughs> sure. Sign me up for all those things. It's not until you unwrap the package and realize that's not what they mean at all and that's not what they're giving you at all in their message that you truly find out, oh, those were simply pretty words. That was simply 
a nice face and you can say a lot of really bad things and give a lot of really bad voice uh, advice but say it with a really nice tone and smile and say love ya at the end of your message uh, but love is not what gets you through an irreversible gender transition at the end of the day so <laughs> uh, <laughs> funny isn't that funny this this also kind of like reeks of uh uh, pyramid scheme to me is like you're you're offering this too good to be true sort of solution to someone's confusion or or um, you know adolescent um, uh, confusion at that um, yeah. and it's just like at the end of the day there's nothing there that will satisfy you or satiate your your confusion or your desires and it's like there are no parameters to changing and it's like oh this is a journey and it's like well when there aren't any parameters then you could just keep going ad nauseum forever and always be in that in that tumultuous confusion forever and ever and it's yeah. just i don't know it just reeks of some sort of pyramid scheme to me honestly and it's not going to bring you any happiness it kind of is they're kind of just selling you a bunch of shit and then asking you to sell it to other people and then you go on and on and on and on and on and on because they made an irreversible decision now they want you to do the same thing and they want the next person and the next person regardless of how happy they really are or uh how fulfilled they truly feel in their choices which most of the time is not at all there's no fulfillment and there's no happiness in making these choices because you'll find that that uncomfortability that scott was talking about is never satiated so you have to keep going you have to keep going and you think oh well if only i do this one other thing that's going to fix it. If only I look like a woman in this way, that's going to fix it. If only people accept me in this way, that's going to fix it. If only I move somewhere and gain more friends and they all say my pronouns correctly, then that's going to fix it. And then you do all these things and you find all these people and then it doesn't fix it because the problem is much deeper than these superficial changes that you make to your appearance and how people regard you in terms of language. And just to showcase uh, some of this language lunacy that we're experiencing right now. Do you guys remember the It's Ma'am video? It's Ma'am! <laughs> uh, the trans woman said to uh, the person who called him Sir. Uh, there's It's Ma'am 2.0. And this video has now taken to the internet, has nearly a million views. Let's check it out and watch. Where? Uh, it's like every single day, you guys. And this is why I complain about all the time. Look. What's what's his name? What's your name? My name's Alex. Tommy. Yeah, your name's Alex, and I'm gonna be talking to your manager. This guy called me sir. I get this happens every fucking day. He said I certainly didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I go, I get called sir. I'm so I fucking tired. Why would you call a chick big ass tits? You're dirty. You're dirty. Fucking. Why would you call? I didn't say. Something. No, stop trying to gaslight trans I people didn't. and tell us that we're crazy. I crazy. You need a fucking. Be mindful of other people and stop being that. a fucking scumbag and you're a liar. I heard you. Stop fucking ga- I should have given you guys a language warning, by the way. Sorry about that. And listen to what he said there. He said, why would you call a chick with big T words, tatas, uh, sir, as if you can just slap on some fake boobs and then that automatically qualifies you as being female. This is really how people view it. They really view, much like the possibly trans Canadian shop teacher who put on the big prosthetic boobs. I just slapped these on and now I should expect everybody to refer to me uh, by the pronouns that I've chosen. She, her, that's all that womanhood means. I have long hair now and now I have boobs. Therefore, I am woman. Crazy. Gaslighting trans people. Wait, what? Did you call me sir again? What was that? You said goodnight, sir? Doesn't end. Alex, I'm gonna be talking to corporate about you, you motherfucker. Fuck you, okay? That's bullshit. You don't fucking harass trans people at work. Yeah, you did. And I'm walking out here like, have a good night, sir. Well, what the fuck is that? No, you don't fucking do this to trans people. This is discrimination. I didn't say no, this is discrimination. I'm fucking done with it. No, I'm gonna talk to corporate about this. You don't harass trans people. Hey, you know, it's one of the stupid things when you're catching Karens. I didn't even say You call me, sir. And you're talking to call me sir the this is this a Popeyes? Like, sir, this is a Popeyes. I am <laughs> so sorry. He's like, I'm gonna call corporate on you and tell them that you called me sir. You think dude is scared about losing his job at Popeyes? Like, I'm sorry. I don't get paid enough to deal with this sort of this sort of conflict. They simply do not get I, I will I will stand for the minimum wage workers right now and say they do not get paid enough to have to deal with this. And you know what? Let's take this to a real life scenario. Let's say somebody in real life calls you a name or a word or something that you don't want to be called. Can we just like man up 
<laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> and not make such a big deal out of it. I get it. You're going to go and get into conflicts with people all the time. And sometimes you go, all right, you're having a bad day. I'm going to go about my business. And certainly for something like sir, which is a an honest mistake to make in this case, you should just go, all right, I'm going to go about my business. Don't even correct this person on pronouns. What are the odds that you see this person again, that they're going to remember you too, and that they're going to remember your pronouns and remember to refer to you that way? Slim to none. Get over <laughs> yourself and your narcissism and leave it be. Yeah. Wow. And for them, it's it's clear the conflict is the point. You know, you're going into this situation looking for someone to oppress you in some way or or an excuse to be able to claim that you're being oppressed so that you can go on this big tirade so that you have your phone in your hand ready to go capture the whole thing on social media so you can go viral and claim victimhood and, you know, get that leverage to justify your cause and justify your oppression and, you know, go all over the Internet and claim what a victim you are and what a champion you are for for trans rights in the trans community. And it's just he's immediately appealing to identity politics to stop gaslighting the trans community and right. all this stuff. It's it's he's got it all figured out before he ever stepped in there. He was looking for a fight. I don't think this person honestly believes that they should be mistaken for a man walking or for a woman right. uh, walking into a, a chicken store like this or they have to at least have a a little bit of self-awareness in their deep heart of hearts that you know more than likely the people are going to be confused about the way that i'm presenting to the world but rather than acknowledging that and going in with a the tiniest bit of self-awareness or humility it's pure hostility it's pure looking for controversy looking for confrontation and it's just because that's that is how this ideology works. It it thrives off of any evidence that they can scrounge up of oppression. So they will push you and poke you and prod you to get to react in any type of way that will lead to a response that they can leverage to tell the story that they're oppressed and that more of society needs to cater to them and kneel to them on national television and invite them uh, to have the president to tell the president about how policy for women should be constructed uh it's, <laughs> that's the the clown world that we're living in yep they're all looking for it i know because i was looking for it at the time at when i was a leftist i was looking for a conflict anywhere i could now somebody commented that this is the trans karen and then just jen react said that ain't karen that's darren um <laughs> and i'm sorry but that is really funny yeah, i also, just have to acknowledge who's it. harassing who here like the right. level the level of harassment you can make okay you can make an argument that say sir was some very low level of harassment but right. dude you ratcheted excuse me ma'am you ratcheted <laughs> it up right to a level that's true harassment going after this kid yes just leave it and like you said you should have the humility to acknowledge that people are going to be confused even compassionate people who want to use your proper pronouns are going to be confused by the way you look because you fall out of what is a very clear and distinct for the most part binary structure so you just need to shift your expectations a little bit i'm sorry this transphobic harassment. Oh You're a fucking bigot. Oh I work. All right, Alex, you know what? I, I can't wait to just. He admits twice calling me sir. No, you lied about the first one. No, you called me sir twice. So sensitive. Oh. Yeah, but you shouldn't be fucking harassing when people with slurs. It's a slur. I never Do you not understand? I if never you, said it's sir. like if you call the person I a color the N word. Don't I fucking. Oh my gosh. Let me pause that. Ooh. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? He said, it's like if you call a person of color the N-word, that is the same as calling a trans person sir. Oh my gosh, the delusion, the delusion. I don't know why <laughs> this irks me to hear. I cannot believe that they think somebody misgendering them is tantamount to somebody looking at a black person and saying, you're an N-word. Oh my gosh! Appropriation, like, uh, anyone? Appropriation, yeah. anyone? This is just you're like right. uh, on the uh, when you say you're, these workers are not getting paid enough for this. I mean, already looks like they're being forced to wear masks in in their job, and they have to put up with that right. and all these COVID regulations or whatever. Still, I mean, I don't know how recent this video is, sure. but I hope it's not this year. And then on top of that, you're expected to sit there and take a bunch of beration from a 
screaming person who's accusing you of transphobia when you're just like, ma'am, this is a Popeye's. I'm just trying to take your order, <laughs> you know, and like the, the amount that we're asking our frontline our front workers are, are, you know, just minimum wage workers to put up with. Usually I'm like, you know, go out there, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I have that more attitude. But I'm like, you know what, if this is what people are having to deal with, let's call it a worker strike. Let's get something yeah, else literally. going on here because this is not okay. If this is a common occurrence, I feel for y'all. Uh, move on, move, move on move somewhere else. And speaking of getting a job and moving on, here's a viral video with 4.5 million views of a young woman talking about the fact that she would not hire somebody with they, them pronouns and explaining why. Here we go. So if I was like hiring and I saw pronouns, here's what I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume you're obviously very liberal. So I'm going to assume you're one of those people that um, is super far left. Um, hey, I'm going to assume you're not a very hard worker. Um, you are either a female or you're a probably not straight guy. So everything in the office is going to have to cater to you, your feelings, your needs, and your emotions. So everyone around you is not going to be able to be themselves and walk on eggshells. Why would anyone want someone like you, unless everyone's like you, in a work environment? You're going to be the laziest person. You're going to be the most entitled, complain the most, and I think you're going to be the first to sue. So shocker that pronouns weren't helping you guys. Sorry, did I, is there anything I missed there? So if I was like, facts, no lies saying. detected, no lies detected. That was straight facts. I don't hire people, but if I did hire people and I saw they, them on an application, I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I'm admitting to discrimination. I'm admitting that if I saw that on a resume paper shredder, I am so sorry. I'm just not putting up with it because it does say so much about a person. It does say that you are really a inherently confused and that's not to dog on you for being confused it's just something that i don't want to have to deal with when i'm trying to hire somebody who is going to support my business and uh, the well-being of that business so it shows that you're confused it shows that you're probably sensitive about what people call you because it's not even within the binary of he him and she her it's literally they them so i imagine there's going to be a lot of correcting happening if you're talking to prospective clients then you're going to be correcting them about your pronouns and telling them that you're they them and oh gosh i just i just can't deal with it and her point about them being the first to sue just imagine if you rightfully fire somebody who has they them pronouns and then they start a discrimination lawsuit or all these different things and try to smack that down on you, I don't want it. No part. No Facetious part. Elise says, uh, I work in HR. This is 100% real, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I will say too, like, you know, this is this video, this girl's talking. I, I mean, you would maybe assume from a more conservative perspective of like if you're a conservative employer, but even from my experience working out here or working in LA, uh, I was at a marketing firm for a few years in Hollywood before uh, joining PragerU. And uh, they had someone come on who was an activist type and did not last at the company very long because there was, like you said, a lot of sensitivity, a lot of neuroticism, a lot of uh, just needs to be catered to me and mm -hmm. uh, just everyone has to walk on eggshells and it's just not a sustainable situation. So it's interesting that even in, in liberal employing environments, uh, this, this holds true. Yeah, it just shows to me that you have you don't have a strong sense of self and you kind of need that if you're going to work hard and, and do something good. Uh, <laughs> and that's not to say that all they thems have nothing to contribute, but I would definitely approach with caution when hiring somebody who has they them pronouns, which reminds me of the time I went to the college campus. Winona State and I was protested by all these kids and I'm like trying to talk to them and have a conversation about any given issue that they have a problem with. Why are you here protesting me? Please tell me. And I'm like, oh, this girl, you should tell me why you're here. And and uh, she's like, well, I don't have a phone to look up the things that you said. And if I had a phone to look up the things that you would say, that you said, I would tell you. And I said, well, somebody get her a phone. And she goes, well, my pronouns are they, them. It's like, okay, <laughs> somebody get them a phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and still nothing happened oh my gosh that's Classic. anecdotal it's anecdotal of course but uh, i see the trend i see the patterns yeah the, the hiring process also is just it's a company doing its due diligence uh in in making an investment in that potential hire so if they yeah. see all of these red flags popping up or the potential red flags that that you as this person who's you know you're wearing your ideology on your chest you know they can make the the decision not to go in that direction and it's like hey that's a that's a great business decision honestly more often than not yeah but now they're probably going to turn this into some sort of discrimination suit 
Like they're going to say you should be unable to discriminate on the basis of somebody's pronouns, which I don't know how they would ever intend to enforce that or, or start enforcing that. But I imagine that's the direction that we're moving in. This is now going to be called discrimination. You guys all saw with the USA powerlifting, uh, whatever the, the commission or association, whatever it is, this girl man actually sued and said I should be able to compete with the women and they were like you know what that's right that's discrimination and you should be able to compete with the women so so what's next it's got to be yeah. got to be you can't discriminate from from jobs based on pronouns yeah this is what happens when you start messing with the basic reality and start building policies and institutionalizing ideas that are based on nothing that are made up out of thin air. We're, you're, we're now at a place where employers could be facing lawsuits in the near future just based on not, you know, wanting to hire someone with imaginary pronouns. Like, and this is where the rubber meets the road with this ideology and stuff. We see it in the women's prisons issues. We see it in gender affirming care and stuff. But it's also, if you, you know, we've seen parents have their children taken away from them uh, because they didn't support their child transitioning yeah. at, as a child. And so this is, you know, it's it's funny to laugh at a situation like this, but we're getting very rapidly to a place and are already in place, uh, in a place in pockets of society where there are legal ramifications to not going along with this ideology and with imaginary pronouns and, and all this stuff. Yeah, you watch these small stories and it's like, haha, funny, funny, haha, eh, and funny, weird. <laughs> and then it's just, how does this move forward? Because this is just a small instance of it. What happens when this scales up and it is scaling up? And the, the truth is that people's lives are harmed and sometimes taken away with this sort of ideology with the, the, the rates of suicide and things like that. So, uh, we need to scale it down is what we need to do. But no, let's have them on the Drew Barrymore show, show and allow them to uh, perpetuate the narrative and continue pushing this uh, specifically to trans youth and endorse it even further. Why not? Now, let's see what we want to talk about next. <laughs> uh, this story has been, or this video has been going viral. This one got 3.1 million views of a young woman talking about changing her life again. And she's living that hashtag van life that a lot of Gen Zers are aspiring to where you travel around in your built out van and, you know, visit different countries. But she met a man along the way. And I was shocked that this went viral. Honestly, I didn't know what the big uh, uproar was about, but let's watch it and see. So I did it. I did the dang thing. I moved to Europe from the US about four months ago. And the plan was to be here for at least two years, maybe more, but now I'm moving back and here's why. Let's start from the beginning though. Around two years ago, I started living nomadically in vans. I built out my first van in my parents' driveway, it took me about five months to convert and I left my little small hometown with nothing but a dream of discovering myself and learning more about the world. About six months after I got on the road, I met my dog Archie and I met my now boyfriend Dante and we quickly became a little family of three. Dante and I obviously hit it off and we started living together in my van shortly after starting dating and this guy is my ride or die. I love him so much. However, I started to have feelings creep in that I wasn't myself anymore. I kind of lost myself in this relationship. I invested a lot of me into him. And I don't regret that, but I also think I want to value myself a little bit more moving forward. Unfortunately, it took me moving to Europe and abandoning everything I had in the US to realize that I need to rekindle my independence a little bit and get back to myself. So in about 24 hours, I will be on a flight back to the US to build out my third van by myself with my dog, Archie. I'm nervous, I'm excited, but I feel so right about this decision. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so that's the video. And the main criticism that she's getting here is a this never ending search for independence and people are accusing her of being uh, possessed by the spirit of feminism. <laughs> and she admits to having found somebody that she's in love with in other videos. She says, I am fully in love with this guy. He is the love of my life, whatever. And she leaves to seek out more independence, which I will admit I am confused by. And maybe it's young women in particular being confused about what the what independence means because it seems as though she is a pretty independent person she picked up all her stuff she packed up a van she moved out of the country and she started living her life on her own she met a man and i think 
she may be confusing being in a relationship with giving away parts of yourself to somebody. And even though she's in love with him now, she is leaving. Or it's option B. She's not really in love with this dude. And this all thing, this yeah. whole thing is just a, you know, a whole run around the circle and move to another country to get away from the dude that I'm not in love with. So yeah, yeah me, that's that's oh, the distinction. Oh, Scott's ready to jump in too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but I'll just say that's that's the distinction is you're you're not in love with someone if you're not willing to put them ahead of you for one second. Mm. That, because that is what love is mm -hmm. by definition. You're mm -hmm. in love with yourself, you're in love with your independence, and that's fine. You know, for the season you're in, go for it. But let, let's just be honest about that. You can't say I have someone that I'm in love with, uh, but also, I'm more in love with myself, so I'm going to go do my thing. Like, you have feelings for them. You care about them. That's that's valid. But don't say you love them if you're not willing to make any sacrifices to be with them. Yeah, that's, cool. a, that's a great point. Um, this also, okay. to me, was kind of reeking of the same sort of... Um, negative aspect of call it masculinity that a lot of feminists would throw out uh, at men uh, over the time. And it's like the fear of commitment um, because you don't know or you're you're afraid of giving part of yourself or all of yourself to someone else because you will lose right. that that freedom that she's speaking toward. Um, so this it's weird that the coin or the uh, the tables, the turntables have turned <laughs> on, on it all. And it's like, you know, this just sounds like you're afraid to settle, settle down yeah. um, and find someone who you can give your life to and, and, and live with. And, um, and that doesn't mean it belittles yourself and it honestly makes you grow as a, as a person. Right. I, I'm, I'm just saying if this, if it's not the space of life that you're in right now, then by all means go, go away and don't, don't waste this guy's time. But, uh, hopefully you're not confused as to what, these things look and and feel like but i don't know this put people were pissed off about this video i don't get being pissed off about this video i get maybe trying to explain to this girl that hey you could maybe see it a little bit differently and maybe you are leaving love behind in that country that you're leaving uh but people are saying you know what do you what do women mean when they say they want to find themselves and learn about the world the worst part is, you know, she didn't come to this conclusion by herself. This is a liberal meme. Oops, sorry. That is floating around. And if you get the urge to get married and have kids, you should break up instead. She's running from any and all commitments. She overvalues her independence in hope of finding herself. Problem is you don't discover 100% of yourself. You find 70% and build the remaining 30 I love when people make up fake percentages. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love. <laughs> Eighty percent of the time, they're right. <laughs> yeah. I love that so much. Uh, but yeah, I, I think people conflate independence with being alone, and that's definitely not synonymous. And maybe she's maybe she's confused on that, or maybe there is some part of herself, and she's unstable, and she needs to, she needs to go find herself, and she's. That living in a van certainly uh, helps you do that, I hear. Yeah. And I'll just say too, like I, I gave, a, uh, I officiated one of my friend's weddings in uh, in France last year, uh, of all places. But uh, in my little two minute speech, one of the things I said was when you're with the right person, um, that is is what makes you who you are more than anything else. And so that like being in a relationship, especially a committed relationship, the higher level of commitment, the more of a safe, safe space you're creating for that relationship to flourish and grow. And, and that highest level of self-actualization can occur and should, for the, for the right relationship for the right people together will occur and you'll become the most and best version of yourselves, uh, in that relationship. So the relationship actually unlocks who you are rather than takes away from it. And I think there's this misguided idea in culture right now that if, if you're going to commit to a relationship that you somehow have to lose yourself and there are sacrifices to be made, make no mistake, but there, I think there, it actually does unlock something even higher for you if you're willing to go there. And it's the same thing with having kids. Like it, it unlocks another level of meaning and fulfillment once you're willing to go there, but that doesn't mean it's without sacrifice. Yeah. I hear a lot of girls now saying, I want to spend all my time with myself and on myself and all of my energy, effort and profit with myself and on myself. And just no idea that you can still, you know, give your time and effort and energy and care to somebody else while still maintaining a relationship that you have with yourself, I guess, and still discovering yourself. It's just discovering yourself is just such a weird phrase to me because you're constantly going to be doing that as so long as you are thinking and you have a brain. Uh, 
I, I think what most women mean when they're like discovering myself is like going out and traveling and seeing the world and meeting more people and that's all fair, fine, dandy, whatever, cool. You can do that. Um, but it doesn't mean that if you give an ounce of your time to somebody else that you're giving away parts of yourself. But yeah. I don't know. Young young women now are possessed with the idea that if you give any of your time to somebody else, it's the end of your world and life and your self-discovery stops at that very point. Ah, anyways, guys, let's get to Super Chats. <laughs> um, let's see what you guys have sent in today from Diva Dawn. Why do the performers I like keep buying into this? Girl, I know. Drew Barrymore. If you have not seen Sleeping in Cars with Boys, that's a Drew Barrymore film. It's fantastic. I do recommend you watch it, even though Drew has betrayed me. Uh, but it's all right. Thank you for your super chat. Tex Fraud, thank you for your super chat, says bombastic side eye on that kneeling. Yes, it does deserve a bombastic side eye. It does indeed. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess Drew does that with a lot of her guests, so it's fine. It's a little cringe, but all right, I give it a side eye simply because it's Dylan. 1800 Young Trash, thank you for your super chat. I'm voting Amal Epinobi for president in 2040. Mm -hmm. Consider this money as my campaign donation. I don't know. I think... I don't know that I would ever, ever run for anything, ever. Not even run a, run a race. <laughs> I can't even bring myself to do that. <laughs> Let alone. We're run about for to see president. you run up a mountain. Yeah. That uh, is in true. A week or so. That is true. We're gonna put out our Cam Haynes vlog a day in his life. And if you haven't seen Lift Run Shoot with Cam Haynes, where I do run quite a bit in that video, you guys can uh, check that out on his channel. It's Cameron Haynes. Let's see, Queen. Mott girl, I hope I said your name right, or Mott girl. Drew Barrymore is having a midlife crisis. She's desperately seeking that second wind as an entertainer actress. Sad. I will say I have seen some pretty sad moments of Drew Barrymore being on podcasts and interviews talking about her journey in loving herself and finding somebody else to love and being in a relationship and all this stuff. So I do feel for her and I'm sure she is. Everybody's on their own journey with that sort of thing. I just hope. You know, the head is not so open that the brain falls out, which can happen sometimes. F uh, facetious Elise, thank you for your super chat. This whole slumber party girl talk on the floor is giving me such creepy fake vibes. Like, who wrote this segment? Ugh, I'm so creeped out. A fabricated moment will often make you feel that way. And I'm not, that's not to say that Drew's fabricating it. <laughs> Y'all know where my accusation lies. Diva Dawn, the tampon song, what the hell? Cringe everywhere. Yeah, that was a little nod to all the people who were pissed off about that video that Dylan made, and it shows, you know, I don't care. He does not care about what you think about him buying tampons for women. And he probably never will. Facetious Elise, thank you. Nobody understands the monetization of performative arts like an actor. Dylan isn't living their truth. He's living his profit and laughing at the impact. He's mad all the way to the bank. He's made all the way to the bank. Oh. Yes, he's making a lot of money. There's no doubt about that. I can't imagine with the amounts of sponsorships and television premiere uh, per performances and the singing and dancing and all these things. I think he's acting now as well. I'm sure he's getting booked and stuff. There's a lot of money to be made with this amount of fame. Just Jen reacts. Thank you for your super chat. I identify as tax exempt for the rest of my life. Now, if they say I owe taxes, I'm going to call them tax exemptus. F this. I'm capitalizing. What's good for the goose? Good for the gander. Yeah, you can try. If there's one thing they won't play with and they won't mess around with, it's taxes. So I, I have a feeling that you're not going to be so successful in that endeavor. But by all means, give it a shot. Are you, are you, if you are make, looking to make a quick buck by identifying as something else, San Francisco did just approve or they're, they're introducing or considering in the final stages of considering giving, what, $5 million in reparations to uh, minorities or black people? It's not going to happen. Every black person. So <sighs> I saw some memes of people, you know, posting the uh, Jimmy Kimmel in blackface or Robert Downey Jr. and being like, this is me on my way to San Francisco. <laughs> so I, there's just no I there's no there's no way San Francisco approves that it would be too clown world. I, I know they'll entertain the conversations and all this stuff, much like how in California they're entertaining, what, two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars per black resident. But five million plus one dollar houses and all this stuff. Oh, gosh. Don't underestimate what clown world is capable of. <laughs> I feel like you're tempting fate. <laughs> yeah, maybe I am. Maybe I am. 
Hannah Daly says, yes, Taylor, thanks for your Christian views always. You're, you're welcome. Just being me. <laughs> He's just being himself, brother. Flynn Vassen says, uh, can I ask you guys to pray for me? Also, great work. The two men are Christian. P please pray for my family. It's to you guys. Wait, what's the yeah. name again? Flynn Vassen. Flynn Okay, well, I will make it a point to pray for you. I hate when people say, I'm praying for you, brother. Like they used to at my church. And you're like, you're not praying for me. You know, you're like, you don't, even, one prayer. you don't even know so my first I really, name. When people ask me to pray for them, I'm like, okay, I have to actually make a note and like at least say a prayer because how else I'm like a liar. And that's really bad. <laughs> and that's really bad. Uh, Natalie Lomsk, how do we treat dysphoria with surgery, but no other medical mental conditions? I say we don't treat all physical illnesses with surgery. It all depends. Thoughts. Uh, yeah, I don't think that would be the number one thing I would think of when somebody was coming uh, in and saying that they struggle with gender dysphoria, much like I wouldn't do that for somebody who is struggling with bulimia or anorexia. You would seek out every other form of treatment you could possibly go down, every other avenue you could possibly pursue before you do anything that involves changing somebody's body. At least in my opinion, Let's continue from Grace Kleiner. Thank you for your super chat. I love your videos. I feel like you're so educated and really good at looking at things from a bird's eye view. You're amazing. Hope you're well. Oh, Grace, that is so kind. Thank you so much. And I, I love that you love listening because we love doing this for you. For the human race, thank you for all the work y'all do. This podcast is reigniting my passion to fight in my community. We love to hear that. Aww. Go have some tough conversations, guys. Talk to some people. Say your piece uh, because it's about damn time. Let's see. Natalie Lomsk or calling a disabled person the R word in reference to the guy saying saying sir is the same as saying the N word to a black person. <laughs> Just delusional. And yes, it would be uh, an, an analogy that he would probably make. He would probably say it's the same as calling a disabled person the R word, which is just simply ridiculous. Asinine. Diva Dawn said, bro, you mad Amala's little sister. Bro, you mad Amala's little sister. Do you know my little sister? Is this, what is this comment? Diva Dawn, please elaborate. You don't have to elaborate in a super chat. Just elaborate in the comments. Ray, uh, bad tip or pad tip. Uh, this, I saw this new ma'am, WTF, the restaurant didn't care. You are supposed to go in, get your food and get out. And God forbid somebody calls you by a pronoun that is not yours or says sir or ma'am. I'd like to speak to the manager. And guess what? Have you seen the video where uh, the girl who's like renting out boats, the, this Karen comes up and is telling her, I'd like to speak to the manager and she ducks below the table and comes back up and says, yes, how can I help you? That's the kind of energy I like to see from these videos. That's what I like to see. <laughs> uh, Nixiality says people with they them pronouns should be charged double if it, if it buys something because they identify as multiple people. I bet a whole lot less people would be identifying as they them if that law came into place. Uh, but I doubt that it ever will. Nathan B, thank you for your super chat. Am I the only one that thinks this is a woke version of a minstrel show? They just replaced race-based caricature with a caricature of women. Yes. This whole trans thing is like blackface, but uh, on the basis of gender. I do feel as though it is tantamount to a minstrel show, at least in the case of Dylan Mulvaney. Skylar Adamson says, would love to hear your thoughts on Z-Way. Have you guys heard of Z-Way? Mm-mm. That was the one that Chet Hanks was on, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't mind Z-Way. She's kind of joking around and trying to be sort of wokely facetious. So I'll give her that. I think there's room for comedy on both ends of the spectrum. So she's fine. I think she's gorgeous. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Z-Way. Uh, I would be on her show if, if she asked. It'd probably be a very confrontational experience. But I'm open to it. Sup, my dude. Drew Barrymore looked at and spoke to Dylan Mulvaney like she did to E.T., but she is neither a kid nor is Dylan an alien. Pure freaking cringe. It's a very good point. Did you send, did you send me that meme of Dylan? Um, there's like a picture of 
Drew kneeling to Dylan and then Drew Barrymore as a child, like holding hands with E.T. Oh, got, like, I think a woman's you said that to me. Uh, Oh, my God. Sorry. The truth internet is, is stranger undefeated. than fiction. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Alfredo Orquiz, thank you for your super chat. Amala, I love you and the whole crew, but you are on thin ice after insulting coffee on Friday and calling it water. Oh, bean water. Taylor, keep up the good work. <laughs> By good work, do you mean just Taylor keep drinking coffee? Yeah. I'll, I will hold it down for the coffee bros. And I do stand by my statement that coffee is hot bean water, but I drink tea, which is hot leaf water. So can you really be that offended? Next is from, I have no idea what your name is. There's a, a bunch of symbols that look like M's and N's. Michael Knowles said nothing wrong. His insight is necessary in many such cases, including his with the this Dylan fella. I have not listened to Michael Knowles' commentary on Dylan. Have you guys? Has there been think, something? Was it just when he said that uh, transgenderism should be abolished from public spaces or whatever? That might have been oh, his controversial the take eradicating thing. The eradicating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I didn't listen to the clip, so I don't know what he said. If I'm giving him uh, the benefit of the doubt, he probably meant just like we need to stop having these conversations. But I have not seen the clip in question. Yeah, I think yeah, the charitable. Just, oh, go ahead, Scott. He was just thinking or speaking directly to the ideology and eradicating the ideology. Ah, so there we go. Yeah, go, Michael. Keep doing your thing. Alfredo Orquist says, I've traveled around both alone and while being in a relationship, and I can say, rather, it is much more fulfilling with someone to share those memories. Love that for you. That's wonderful. Hopefully you're still friends with or in a relationship with that person that you traveled around with. I love that for you. Nixiality says, I need some advice or some Amala advice here. I'm currently attending an IT course, and it is extremely leftist pride preferred pronouns and a definitive lack of free speech should i continue this course mm, i would speak up i mean i would certainly say something how does an it course get woke and talk about pride i would love to know how that works i mean the chat gpt thing is woke so it's not that far off yeah you never know how these things infiltrate your conversations i mean i would just say something if especially if it's just like an, a teacher or instructor who's injecting this conversation and say, uh, I'm not cool with this. Say something first, see what happens after that, and then decide whether or not you want to keep the course. It's kind of just like a risk versus reward type of thing. But I would certainly my advice is to say something. Um, do you guys think any different? Uh, Scott, what do you think? I need to reread the comments. Yeah, I know. I was trying to reread it as She's well. She's in a woke IT course and just wondering, or he, I don't know, uh, wondering if they should say something about. You, I think you can say, what you know, you can do. raise a complaint. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where if you're going through a course that's part of a larger degree, you don't, you can bite your lip and or bite your tongue and kind of work your way through the course. Uh, as well as you can and just keep your head down and get it done so you can get your degree. But at the same time, the, you know, conservative podcaster in me is like, no, you know, make it an issue, you know, yeah. if, they're, if they're being unfactual or pushing ideology on you that you can demonstrate is not, you know, grounded in real reality or that's harmful in some way, then yeah, go, you know, raise the issue and, and make some noise uh, by all means. Yeah, I think I think it's valid to also approach the professor or instructor and ask them precisely how this uh, affects or um, is in any way, shape or form connected to the IT curriculum that you're that you're learning. And how, yeah. how does that even how does that even relate? You know, yeah. the, the woke ideology that's getting into that. Uh, I'm not really sure how that how that would. But I think it, it would be valid to just go up and ask that question first and foremost and have them try to explain it to you. And if it's probably going to be a terrible explanation um you can keep going further and, and keep asking the questions yeah i mean it's happening everywhere now and yeah i mean in, in in a sense you're getting an it certification you might as well just finish out what you've started and keep going because i imagine there's money involved as well but also if it starts to become something where they're asking you to do something you don't agree with then definitely say something my sister was she's in college and she's like yeah, we're doing, uh, oh, I forgot which book she's reading, but she's reading this, you know, old work of literature. And she's like, we're, I have to write a 500 word essay about looking at this book through the lens of queer theory and like analyzing this character to see what, 
what sort of things in his sexuality or his desires are in any way adjacent to being queer or could qualify him as being queer. I'm like, what the heck? Is this what you're spending your time in college doing? Oh, man. <laughs> Just wild. You're paying for that. You're paying for that. Unbelievable. Okay. The Nicodemus, 1984. Just a message to honor your team and yourself for facing for facing daily this kind of videos and delusional people it takes dedication keep going guys we love it thank you so much for your support we're glad that you guys uh wa love watching it and love sitting through this with us we don't like to suffer alone <laughs> just as a human species in general we like to suffer together so that's what we do <laughs> on the show gary thank you for your super chat to answer your post no i didn't watch the oscars they need more actors slapping each other to make it entertaining oscars x ufc that's going to be uh, next year's. That would solve their ratings issues right away. I think it would. <laughs> I think it's it like would. that old celebrity death match on Comedy Central. You guys remember that? Uh, no, I've never seen that. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. You, That's a celebrity millennial death thing. Match. They fight each other? What is that? Yeah, it's like claymation characters, and <laughs> they'd like have celebrities like you know fighting in a ring and Dude. pulling each other's eyeballs out and they stuff. Should, was... They should pull all the nominees for the given award, set the award in the middle of the stage, and then just say whoever gets it first. <laughs> Break the pull cue stick in half and let him All go for it. While We're playing having clips. tryouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> while playing clips of their acting in the background like they normally do. That would be that would be a, a sight for sore eyes. I love this. <laughs> Levon Dupont, thank you so much. Says as a trans woman in air quotes, I agree with ninety eight percent of what your content represents. I love the content and enjoy your lives. P.S. Notice I didn't say transgender. Only two genders. Levon. Welcome to the program and thank you so much for watching and supporting. We appreciate your perspective and support because so often people think we're just sitting in an echo chamber and not talking to people who are members of these communities or even disagree with us. And so often that is not the case. So thank you for uh, being a member of the trans community who, who agrees with what we're saying. Ashley, thank you for your super chat, says, Amala, love, love your content. Can you please talk about the lack of religiousness sometime? I am a religious and conservative as well. Few out there. So wait. I'm getting mixed messages, Ashley. She's not religious. <laughs> she's not religious. She's, yeah. I'm not religious. So are you sort of in the camp of you are secular and you still believe that religion is important and that there is a lack of religion in today's day and age? I'm... A little bit confused so clarify in the comments uh but yeah i'm an a religious conservative myself scott and taylor are religious conservatives so uh i don't know that i would i could speak to a lack of religion <laughs> maybe taylor or scott that is a that's more of a commentary for for their part and, <laughs> but i don't know that i could speak to a lack a uh, lack of religious I, don't, I mean i don't have much to say about that but anyways yeah we're all we're all here we're all we're all you know on yeah. the same boat. If so. you listen to Dennis, Dennis is like, I believe that there's a lack of religion in the West and that's like a, a major problem for us. So there are people who uh, believe that and some secular people who believe that. So maybe that is exactly who Ashley is is, and that's what she's speaking to. But I, I don't know. Please clarify in the comments. Sarai Milan, thank you for your super chat. As someone who was suicidal to identify with being uh, not alive and following through with that, how far we go with validating our feelings to satisfy someone's warped feelings, harmful validation. I need to read that again. I'm so sorry. As someone who was suicidal to identify with being not alive and following through with that. How far we go with validating our feelings to satisfy someone's warped feelings, mm. harmful validation. Do you guys understand what is being said? Yeah, about? I see what they're saying. I, I'm like, sorry. If, so, if it's so important to validate people's feelings who are trans, presumably, yeah. then and that's it's inherently we take it at face value that it's a good thing to um, affirm their feelings then what about someone who's suicidal i think is the point that she's making ah okay gotcha uh, and yes there's there's so many feelings that we feel that maybe are very strong right now and maybe are leading to a lot of confusion a lot of inner turmoil a lot of depression anxiety but maybe we shouldn't be encouraged to sit in those feelings and right now, people are being encouraged to sit in those feelings, regardless of what they are. Anything, it doesn't even have to be in relation to trans issues. If you're feeling sadness, people are encouraging you to sit in it. If you're feeling depressed, people are encouraging you to sit in it. Uh, in, in everything. In everything these days. Or if not, just take a pill and it will solve it. 
Diva Dawn says, I made the comment, bro, you mad about trans men and gave a nod to the story you told about your little sister. How do you remember that? Yes. So my sister, <laughs> this is actually so funny. So my sister was a little demon child when we were kids and she's, she's not anymore, but uh, whenever we were angry at each other, she would just look and be like, you're mad, you're mad, bro, you're mad. And oh my gosh, if, the, if you want to make somebody mad or even, even more angry when they're feeling angry, just look at them and be like, wow, you're so angry. <laughs> <laughs> it really does the trick. My sister used to do that to me all the time. Oh, love her, love her to death. We've got another one from Natalie Lomsk. Thank you. Love your content. Can you talk about news related to the disability rights movement? Interesting videos trend that shows that show rights being violated. Would love to discuss. Uh, I'm not familiar with this. The disability rights movement. Are you? Yeah, maybe I have. I don't know what she's referring to specifically, but you could right. go on our Discord in the show topic suggestions channel and uh, send some links to these videos, and we'll take a look. Yes, if you definitely join the Discord, if you ever want to give topic suggestions, guest suggestions, anything for a show, even comment on a show that we've already done, join the Discord, which is in the description down below, and that will also sign you up for our email list. And if you sign up for the email list, guys, we might send you a mug. We're picking ten of you, plus some stickers, plus a uh, handwritten little note from me sent to your door so sign up for the email list the link is in the description down below also like the stream i'm just asking so much of you guys because we're in a relationship right and you're not going to go and buy a van and move away from me in order to seek independence i want you guys in this relationship giving me your time and your effort uh so <laughs> wow so thank you thank you for that rock paper scissors says do you have unapologetic merch for purchase have I been living under a rock? No, we don't. I'm working on it. We had problems. Let's just say I had some problems. I created a whole merch line and everything of like shirts and stickers and all this stuff, but I had to rework it and change some stuff around. So now I'm in the process of doing that and they're going to be dope. They're going to be cool, kind of like streetwear style t-shirts and stuff. And eventually we'll branch out into other things and create some more stuff for you guys. So uh, that'll come hopefully at some point. Uh, ooh, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but this year. Yeah. I got a couple more super chats that we missed sure. before we go. Rice and Spice says, Amala, the media LGBTQ support on women's erasure with trans wombs transplant. Do you, do you plan to talk about the womb transplant movement? We actually did a video on the trans womb transplant thing. Uh, it, we have a short on it. Uh, on this channel we can talk about it more in depth if more stories come up i've only seen a few people actually genuinely consider something like this so uh yeah we do have a video on it and my general was wednesday's episode last week that we covered it yep i want to say yeah Monday or wednesday we did cover it uh somewhat at length so yeah you guys can check that out so we have talked about that subject ebert says just want to say that i am a female with deaf above average size boobs, I have been called sir. I did not have a conniption. Happens all the time. You know how when your server drops off food at your table and is like, hope you enjoy, and you go, you too. And you're like, fuck, god damn it. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, god. It's like that the TSA agents when you're going on a flight. Have a good flight. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, damn. I did not mean to say that. It's the same thing when you accidentally call somebody sir or ma'am or whatever. Get over it. You should not have a tantrum over that. And I appreciate that you don't have a tantrum when people accidentally say sir to you, as nobody should. Go about your life. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors in the chat said, Ebert, how did you survive that? <laughs> <laughs> Fizzy M, uh, thank you for your super okay. chat. If they are as inclusive as they claim to be, then where is the H for hetero in their alphabet soup? Don't actually want that. Just saying. I don't actually want that either. Please have, have the letter H as far away from the LGBTQ acronym as possible. But I get exactly what you're saying. There is no inclusion for people who are hetero or cis- Oh my gosh. I put out a tweet and I'm now constantly being called a turf and a transphobe because I said I'm not a cis woman. I'm just a woman and uh, people are pissed. So, yeah. I have a couple more here um, that I think we missed. We got Lynn Deal said, my manager friend was fried or I think fired after eight years because of a guy like this who was hired, was late, couldn't wear uniform, but said he was, a, wouldn't wear uniform, but said he was a bigot. 
Ah, see? This is what happens when you allow these little sensitive sallies to come work at your company. They create problems. They really do. This is why I'm sorry, but there will probably be never in the history of this podcast a they them working on this podcast. Unless I meet except a Scott. really exquisite <laughs> except Scott. <laughs> Scott just had a daughter. I don't think he's a they them. Um, but yeah, unless you're a really a, just extraordinary they them, then I'll hear you out. I will hear you out. I know there's some of you who watch this show who have they them pronouns. Uh, I don't think we got to this one either, but uh, Dixon Butts said, oh, I love uh, that. "Of course, I don't know. I think Dylan's great personality. I'd like to thank Dylan. I think Dylan's a great personality. I'd like to thank Dylan for everything he's done for the patriarchy. It's back, baby. Men truly are great. Yep, those meninists, those men's rights activists, and the MGTOWs—they're really over the moon about what's happening right now because this, <laughs> that, if they, if." There's no better definition, I guess, no better example of men going their own way than, than Dylan Mulvaney. This is true. And Ashley clarified her super chat. She said, no, I'm saying I want to hear about your a-religiousness. Most conservatives I hear on YouTube are Christian. I am not Christian, so I'd love to hear more about your beliefs in that department. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe we'll okay. do a video on that one of these days. I know it it's, can kind of be uh, what a dividing subject matter. A lot of people don't like to hear about that, but hey, I, I'm willing to make a video about it because I stand by my my thoughts and views on it. And S Scott and Taylor are here to represent theirs, so yeah, well, well, we talk about it off camera too. It's good yes, stuff. We do, yeah. we do. So we will get into that. Flynn Vassen says thoughts of Tucker Carlson's January 6 footage. Just dude, that the shaman guy. I forget what his name is. Uh, Chanley. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the QAnon shaman. Get him out of prison. What the hell? <laughs> what? It's so wild to watch that footage and to see all these politicians come forth and say, oh, such a wrong move to give transparency on the issue and for Tucker to put those videos out there and to misconstrue the situation. I'm sorry. Since when is more video footage and more proof for the eyes of the American people ever been a bad thing? That's really the extent of my thoughts on it. I did speak at it, speak about it uh, at length on Tucker Carlson's uh, not Tucker Carlson, on Dennis Prager's radio show. So you guys can check that out by going to SalemRadio.com. But that's it. Uh, full transparency. We should have seen that footage from the get-go. It sucks that it takes a media personality to get access to the footage to then put it out to the American people when it should be the government doing that. But no, it's... Uh, it wasn't helpful to the narrative, right? You can't paint an insurrection and a domestic terrorist event uh, if you show the footage. So... They used it to their benefit, and now here we are, and there are still people in prison. Wild. Chanel S. says, Being a tomboy all my life, being a woman, has been more about loving my body and myself. It frustrates me that femininity equals women is the message. Yeah, that's exactly what the trans movement is perpetuating. You want to be a woman? Big boobs? Get a butt? and feminize your face and put on makeup and a wig and a dress and that's what makes you a woman so it's quite literally pushing forward objectification and this such a shallow view of of womanhood in itself and i think that's our last super chat real quick i want to read uh, this comment from uh wednesday adams this was not a super chat but it just made me smile so yeah. she said i love your channel i've been subscribed for two months now and your channel is amazing i'm only 14 and both my parents are far left i'm so happy i found my way out of this oh so thank so you for sweet. watching wednesday I'm so, sorry for all the language you're 14 <laughs> that's not <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe not i don't know what i what i don't know what i was like at 14 honestly though to be honest i might have been I was a little mischievous, you know? Anything you hear on this show is not going to be as bad as stuff that you hear in public school if exactly. you're in school at 14. Yeah, so. that's true. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll continue. And thank you so much for that sweet message. That is so, so very sweet. And I'm glad that we can uh, be here for you uh, in, in these formative moments in life because, my goodness, I can't imagine being 14 right now. Oh. <sighs> I feel for you, girl. Anyways, guys, that's our show for the day. Thank you so much for watching. Please sign up for the email list if you want to be entered with uh, a chance to win a mug, some stickers, and a personal note from yours truly. Uh, yeah, go to the link in the description down below. Join the Discord if you want to join a community of like-minded, free-thinking people who you can speak to. And if you want to 
submit any guests or show topics, you can do so through the Discord. Please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single day. We are live and we broke 2K again on this stream. So guys, thank you for supporting and watching live. We really, really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow, not on the live show, but when we talk about the uh, two guys who perpetrated the Jesse Smollett race hoax. <laughs> They've come forward with a video where they explain exactly what they did on that night, and it's so hilarious. So we're going to watch that tomorrow, and uh, we'll be back on Friday for the live show, and I can't wait to see and talk to you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.